Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Learning. Um, earlier today, I installed uh, Blender 2.79, and I think this is the official Blender 2.79. It has a lot of uh, new features and bug fixes, and then also the noise functions and all the cool stuff. But I also noticed that this Blender is actually really, really fast. Um, and I've been using Spreadshock add-on and animation nodes for a while, and I actually noticed a very, very um, increase like in the speed. So today I will do like a quick improvisation using Spreadshock add-on nodes and also animation nodes. So basically the idea here is uh, to generate some kind of mesh in Spreadshock that I can use uh, inside animation nodes. So let's just quickly get started. So quickly create new node tree for Spreadshock. I'm gonna save this real quick. ANSV improv. Uh, Blender 279. Gonna save it, and this guy is gonna be. Uh, we know that with Spreadshock, there are actually already plenty of uh, generators, so we can quickly generate like a really cool mesh, like uh, all the primitives that we you might use. Um, what I'm gonna use today is probably the Taurus one. If not the Taurus, the other. The other Taurus, uh, the Taurus knot. I, I I like the Taurus knot as well. So create a. I will use a viewer B mesh right away because I want to see like a like a real object in the view. So that's what we get, and we can control this. And you notice uh, there's actually like a speed increase. Uh, you will see later when I'm using animation nodes, and it's actually performing really really fast. Okay, let's uh, let's start with this uh, with this Taurus, and we're gonna have a uh, Susan head, and we're gonna use uh, some kind of instancing for the Susan head. I'm gonna scale it a little bit, and I'm gonna save it and switch to animation nodes. Real quick, I will use the object mesh. Um, I think object mesh data is the one we need. And we can grab our torus. We're gonna be using the the mesh data from this guy, all the points, everything like vertices, vertex normal, all that. By default, this object mesh data actually only have like vertex locations, polygon indices, edge indices, but there are actually plenty more, as you can see here. You can get the access to vertex normal, so I just switch it on, and then there's also polygon normal, polygon central uh, center and all those including material indices and mesh name they are all very useful uh, I'm gonna focus on the just vertex location and vertex normal and I will be using the usual object instancer I'll grab uh, Suzanne I will instance Suzanne um, all along the vertex location so I'm gonna plug this into the instance it's gonna generate Suzanne of that amount and I will output this using object transform output to get a result and this is the position this is the objects instance object and for the locations we just use the vertex locations and there you go there we have Suzanne being instance on the torus I'm gonna hide the, the master Suzanne this head put it on layer 2 and back to spread job back to this guy we can adjust it and we can also hide the this uh, relationship lines. Okay, now let's continue on and with this guy. You can see it's actually really really fast. And let's adjust this thickness and all that. Um, the nice thing about this is we can spin it. It's actually very cool kind of effects. Um, so we can. Create, uh, we can use frame info. Normally, this actually perform uh, a bit slow, but uh, in this Blender 2.79, this is actually really really fast. I this is very really noticeable. I can run it at 60 frame per second, and it's still like super fast. So that's Susan had going like that. So I can use the matcap and ambient occlusion, and still looks really fast. And so yeah, so this still being um, the torus 
still being generated on the fly by Spreadshop. Uh, we don't need to see the, the, the actual torus, we can hide it. So we just see the monkey head. Okay, it's looking quite nice. Control the torus size and all that. So you got all these options here. See, it's performing like super fast. I don't know, I can have like millions of faces. I think it's still super fast. Look at that. And okay, the torus is fun, but we can also use this torus knot. And let's see how it goes. If I just um, plug this guy in there, and with the in, with this guy, we just have the edges. And let's see how it looks now. Okay, we got this result, and I can adjust it. So torus knot, of course, uh, is that the uh, particle is that kind of primitive that gives you a um, very interesting knot very very quickly. You can just simply play around with this all day and get a very interesting result. Um, we can also spin this guy, so thanks to the creator of these nodes, um, this is like really, really fun and powerful nodes to use. So this guy also gives you interesting result. So you can play around with this uh, major radius, minor radius. It's very beautiful um, pattern. And yeah, actually the, the curve looks something like this. This guy, you, you can see we actually have a multiple curve. Keep that in mind uh, with torus knot. Sometimes you get like a multiple curve actually. Yeah, but I think that's pretty cool. And then uh, one more thing uh, you need to be aware of. With Viewer Mesh by default, um, the normal actually not being generated. There is this calculate normals and fixed vertex count and all that. Sometimes you actually want to turn it on uh, because if you go back to animation nodes and then let's say you want to play around with the rotation as well. And we are using like um, directions to rotations. And if we grab the vertex normal, <clears throat> your uh, rotation goes in there. This doesn't work right away. Uh, you need to go back to spare job and turn on the vertex normal. So calculate normal and now you can see now Suzanne is following the normal vertex normal of uh, this geometry. This is like on and off toggle, okay? Once you get that and then it's fine, we, you can go back to animation nodes and kind of fix this uh, rotations. Now you can see Susan head is following the vertex normal properly. And back to spare chalk, we can continue on, play around with this with this guy right here. I think one is good and then you can play around with this. You can create like all kind of interesting pattern like that. That's very interesting and you can just turn on world background, give it some gradient. It's a little bit nicer looking. So yeah, I, I actually like to use Matcap a lot just to give, to give like a better looking render. But of course, you can use your own proper cycles materials and render this nicely and you get um, this like a kind of abstract looking animations. I thought this is quite nice. Play around with the with the P, and you get all this pattern. I think I don't know. I think two point seven nine is really really fast. I don't know. See, this is like playing back in real time. I can increase this into thirty or even sixty frame. See how smooth it is now. It's sixty frame per second, and no slowdown whatsoever. Perhaps I can also increase that. Or oh, increase the curve resolution, maybe. So now it's get like super detail. That's really cool, see? This kind of pattern, what is this, you know? Try, uh, maybe bake it out and then turn it into some kind of AR app. It's gonna be really cool. So yeah, that's pretty much a quick look, like an improvisation using Spreadshock add-on and animation nodes add-on in Blender and just a bunch of simple nodes and really using this um, 
spreadshot generator for animation nodes um, just a couple of simple nodes can give you this, this like very interesting looking animations um, there you go uh, thanks again for tuning in let me know what you think and I'll see you next time thank you bye